Flexbox is absolutely amazing. And in this video, I wanna look at three Flexbox design patterns that you can use in your projects that are easy to set up, easy to control, and in the case of the last two, do away with the need of media queries. Plus, I've got a little bonus tip at the end about spacing, so stick around for that one. So we are here in VS Code, and I already have some CSS here, but this is just for styling purposes. It's not doing um, anything too much. And you can see here, this is my first section here. So we're gonna focus on this one right here, which is all of them. And right here, you can see I have this div of even columns, and I have three columns in there. So the first thing we will do is come in and select those even columns, so even columns. And obviously, you don't have to use these naming conventions. I'm just doing this for this tutorial here. You can have better class names for these. But um, we have my even columns, and I'm going to do a display of flex on there and hit save. And just like that, we have a display flex. And one of the issues with display flex is elements want to shrink down to as small as they can get most of the time uh, as a default behavior because they have a flex shrink on them. And you can see they are getting small. This is just the padding that is giving them their size right now. And an even bigger problem, and this is why I like this one, is let's say we came in and this one has 10 words in it. And if we come on this one and I have a lorem uh, lorem, let's say 50 words on that one. And then we have a little bit more in this one, a lorem, a lorem 25. And I'm going to hit save. And now we get three columns that are not all the same size. And uh, actually, let's do one other thing that's going to exaggerate this even more is let's just shrink this padding down a little bit. And you can see that this middle one is bigger than those other ones because there's more content in it. And it sucks that content can have an influence on our layout when we're doing things like this. And if I hit save here with no content, that gets even smaller and obviously you wouldn't have no content, but um, a lot of the widths here are being controlled by like the, the size of the smallest word and stuff. So the easiest way to go and make sure that they're all the same, and that's the idea here, is to have three equal columns at all times, is to not select the even columns themselves, but to select all the children, or the direct children anyway, because we don't want to select things that are uh, deeper in there, but we can do an even columns and then select all direct children. And then on my direct children, what I want to do is a flex basis of 100%. And when I hit save, we're going to look over here and you're going to see they're all going to get the same size. They're all equal widths now, which is really cool and really useful. And this is happening because when you have a flex basis of 100% on all of them, but they're allowed to, they want to be 100%. Flex basis is saying I all, you all want to be the same size. Um, and then, you know, if I wanted to, I could even come in and delete one of these columns and hit save. And now we have two equal columns. And if you wanted four, you could have four equal columns and so on and so forth. Um, if you squeeze the columns too much, you might find that there's a little bit of play just because it's Flexbox is going to make sure that the content is fitting. Um, and at one point it can cause overflow if you have way too much content and it doesn't work. But for the most part, this will give you the most of the time, if you're using it in a sensible way and not squeezing things down on a phone. Uh, this should work really, really well for you. Um, so there, you know, here, let's just do it really quick. We can have, uh, we can have two columns, hit save. We have three equal columns, du duplicate it again, hit save. We have four equal columns and so on and so forth. And it just makes it really nice to have equal columns where you know all of them are going to be the same and it doesn't matter how many you're putting in there. And again, this is happening because they want to be 100%, but they're allowed to shrink down because flex shrink is on by default. And so, Ideally, they're all the same. And what this is the real trick here is just saying all three columns should be the same size. Uh, what you don't want to do here is say 33% because that's going to work for three columns, but then that could start breaking things if you have two columns, let's say. So all of a sudden, if we deleted one of these, now, well, they want to be 33%, so they are. And they don't have to be bigger because by default, they don't want to be bigger. So the trick is to take advantage of flex shrink on this one, which is on by default. And this is allowing, uh, it's gonna make it work by doing it at 100% and just making sure that all of them are at 100%. Um, or they're all the same size. It could be 1,000% and I think it would still work actually. So that is the first one. That is my even columns right there. Two selectors and it should work pretty well almost all the time. Um, let's go down to this gridish. And the gridish is one of the ones I actually like the most. So once again, we're gonna select my selector. So it's grid-ish and we'll do a display flex, uh, flex and we get them shrinking down to be as small as they can possibly be. Now, the real magic of grid-ish comes in two different spots. So the first one I'm gonna do is come on to my grid-ish and we're gonna do the same selector we used before. 
And on my Gridish, this time we're gonna do something a little bit different, where we're gonna use a flex, um, the flex property, which is a shorthand for both flex, or for all three of flex grow, flex shrink, and for flex basis. And what I wanna do is a one, one, and then I need to choose a size. And this size, in this case, we don't want it to be 100%, which is my flex basis, which is, again, think of flex basis sort of like a width. Um, it changes if you change the flex direction, but for now, that's the right way to think about it. So if I do this, it, it's sort of the same thing as my even columns, to be honest. Um, the only difference with it is if I had a small number here, they're allowed to grow, so they're still gonna fill up that available space. So like this, no magic is really happening. But my flex basis doesn't even need to be a percentage, or we could be, let's say we do 33% actually. And we'll start there. And so we sort of want three columns, but if there's something else going on, we sort of want to fix it. And where the real magic for this comes in is if we use a flex wrap, which by default is a no wrap like that. So what we want to actually do is change that and make the def change it to wrap. And what wrap is going to do is if there's not enough room, go on to another row of content. And so we get three columns and then we had two left over. So they fill down here. Now the order of the properties here is flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. And usually, or not usually, but by default, the flex grow is actually zero, which means don't grow. So if you left it like this, you would get something like this, which looks a lot more like a CSS grid type layout actually. Um, but by putting the one here, what's happening is it's saying we're allowed to shrink, but we're also allowed to grow. So we want to be 33%. If we're in a situation where there would be empty space, you're allowed to grow to fill that space. And the real magic happens here, not if you're using percentages, because if you're using percentages, um, what's gonna happen is no matter what you do, pretty much it's going to stay the same, right? Or we get this where it's really running out of room because there's not enough padding. Um, but you get the situation where it's, for the most part, always going to look exactly the same. Um, but where the real magic comes in is if you come in here and you actually put a width. So let's say, I'm gonna make it small just so we can actually see it in action here um, a little bit better. So it looks the same right now, but it wants to be, each one of these wants to be 10 M. So if I make this bigger at one point, you're going to see, well, we can actually get, and let's, let's just do this a little bit here. So if we get bigger, oh, we can actually pop up because there's enough room for these to all be 10 M and there's not enough room for this one to fit there. So he's just going to grow across the bottom. And if we get big enough, they'll actually all go next to one another if there's ever enough room. And then if we shrink down at one point, they stack that way. And if we go a little bit further, they stack all one on top of each other. That's so cool and so nice, right? This is super, super awesome. Um, so you can create this responsive layout without any media queries, anything like that. Now, sometimes you do run into these awkward situations like this. It depends how many columns you have, the widths you've set and different things like that. So it might not be ideal for every situation that you're gonna want, but depending on the type of content uh, that you wanna have, it's super nice that it just automatically adjusts on the fly for you. Um, and I think in the right situation, it can be actually super, super useful. So I think that is a really fun one that could definitely be used on uh, sites. And again, once again, the nice thing with this is you're setting, you're selecting all your direct children here. So whatever the content that you're placing in this, it's just going to fit into the space that you've created for it. So I think that's really, really useful. And then we get down to here, which is my content and sidebar. And this is obviously a very popular design pattern that people have. Um, so for this one, we called it content sidebar. And on my content sidebar, well, of course, we're looking at Flexbox design patterns. So we need a display flex on there, which will give me my three columns. And for this, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna comment out these first two for now so we can just focus on this one because every time the page refreshes, it's gonna jump up if not. Um, so we have my content sidebar and we're sort of gonna steal that same idea once again, but this time we have to do it a little bit differently, uh, but we are gonna use the flex wrap again. So we want a flex wrap of wrap and this is what's going to let us get away with not having a media query which is obviously a nice little thing and in this case what we do need to do though is we need to select them separately so i'm going to do it like this where i'm going to say content sidebar and then uh whatever the nth child is child one um now in your case you might have a nice class on that of like main content and sidebar and you could just put your class in here instead of doing it this way um, so it depends on how you want to set this up but on here, what I'm going to do is we're going to say it has a flex of, what do we want to do? We want to allow it to grow and to shrink. And I'm going to say it should be at 70%. So we have a 70% main area. And then what we'll do is we'll copy this and we'll paste it down here. And this will be my nth child too. So we're selecting the second one over here. And on this one, we want it to be 30%. So if I hit save on that, well, we get this nice 
you know, 70, 30 break. And for the most part, we're always gonna get that 70, 30 break just like that, which is super cool and super useful. Now, there are a few issues with this. Um, obviously, depending on the situation this is being used and the type of container you have and other things, like sometimes areas might get too big, sometimes areas might get too small, and we wanna prevent that from happening. And that's also where this is going to come into play. Because I use the 70-30 split here, it's very rare. Um, it'll only be at really small screens when they'll actually stack on top of each other. So here you can see it is actually stacking. And again, that's just because it's run out of room because of the padding and everything that's involved in here as well. Um, but what we want to do is we, we sort of want to have more control on this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, and this is very specific to this situation because we're, you know, we have lots of empty space and white space and stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is on my main area, I want to prevent it from ever getting too small because when we start getting into like this realm, like obviously we don't really want this to happen, right? That's getting really, really narrow. So I'm going to throw a min width on here and I'm actually going to use CH and the CH unit is a super useful unit. Just it's how many characters wide. So it's based on the font size of that area. So it's going to, and based on the font. So it's going to sort of calculate. So it just make sure that our line lengths aren't getting too short. And what that means is if we have that, it's going to stop. Like when this gets to 20, let's actually boost that up just for demo purposes for now, because it's still kind of small. So you can see that even though it's allowed to sh grow and shrink, when you set min and max widths, that actually overwrites the, the flex shrink and flex grow. So by setting a minimum width, we're saying that like, if there's room, they're gonna go next to each other, but if we run out of room, that they're gonna stack because you know there's not enough room, so then it's allowed to grow again. But obviously 50 CH is really big and it's gonna cause an overflow, so that's no good. Um, so let's just say 25 or 30 CH, I think would be a bit safer uh, of a number. And you can still see, I'm getting some overflow. So you do wanna play with those numbers a little bit probably to get something that works for your layout. And I think most of the time you wanna have all this empty space around, so that will help. Um, but you get this idea of it's being big and then we get to here and then it breaks and it stacks one on top of each other. And of course you could do this with M or M or pixels um, as well. And if you, you know, if you want to make sure that it's, it's at a sensical level and, but you get that and then they're going to stack one on top of each other. So there we go. And then we can even do the same thing on the side here of saying this has a min width of say 15 CH. And then it might even kick in earlier then because here we get it going like that, but we, we want to make sure this area doesn't get too small either. And then just like that, it can break over like that. And if you're in a situation where you're getting to really big screens and I don't know, you don't have a container or this is getting too big, you can also throw a max width on uh, this as well to prevent the side, you know, you'll have this range where the sidebar grows and shrinks, but it never gets too big and it never gets too small. Before we get to the last little thing on spacing, I'd like to let you know that I've put together a cheat sheet with all three of these design patterns on it. So if you'd like that cheat sheet to have, it's a single page PDF. You can go and grab that down below and then come back to see on how we can do our spacing on these really easily. So on to how we can create spaces between these. And I do think that's super useful to be able to do. And I'm gonna do it the, the modern CSS way because I like exploring modern CSS. And that is through, we're just gonna select all of these. Um, so I'm just gonna put my cursor there. And then I'm also going to put my cursor here. Anywhere I have a display flex, I wanna put my cursor and I'm gonna put in a gap. And you might be saying, Kevin, isn't gap a uh, grid property? And yes, gap is a grid property. It well, used to be grid gap, and then they changed it recently to just be gap. It works for grid, it works for columns, and it also works here for Flexbox now, most of the time. It doesn't work in Safari, sadly. Um, so if you do want, it is in the technical preview of Safari, so it's on the way, it's almost here, it's super close. Um, but you can see how wonderful this works. So it's not only creating my gaps here and here, but it's also creating my gaps when I end up with rows like that. So you know, you get this nice layout that, did I undo my, my, oh, my gap is actually breaking that. Look at that. You might want to do a calc. Um, so let's just move this down to 25% for now though, just to get it to work. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, you know, the gap is working this way here. And then when they stack one on top of each other, the gap works that way. It's just so much magic and so wonderful, the gap property in Flexbox. Uh, I did do a deeper dive on the gap property and how we can do a fallback for Safari. And actually it's not a fallback for Safari, it would be for everybody. The only thing is sadly, it will not work in this situation and would require a media query for something like this here. Um, or anytime you want things to stack the other way, uh, just because of how it works. But it's something that, you know, in the meantime, you could definitely use. But again, it wouldn't work on this one, sadly, just because of this one being a little bit more dynamic and you don't always know which one is here, right? So here it's the third one. And when I go like that, then the third one uh, moves up and stuff like that. But I have a video on that. The link for it is down below if you want to check it out. Um, where I, yeah, I dive into more detail, but the gap property is in the technical preview of Safari right now. So hopefully it won't be too long until we see it in 
Safari and we can start using it in production all the time. If you're interested in that cheat sheet and you didn't yet go and get it, don't forget to grab it before you go. And a big thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and got a few ideas that you can use going forward. A really big thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And of course, until next time, don't you forget to keep on making your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. And you might have noticed I have glasses now. How did this happen? I'm getting old. This is what's happening. I'm too old to be a YouTube content creator. I think this is, this should be maybe the end of, you know, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I am getting older. My eyes are starting to get fuzzy a little bit. I was fine without them, I guess, but here we are. And yeah, hope you, I hope you like what they look like. And I really hope you like this video. <laughs> Until next time, guys, bye.